Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Buddhang saranangachami, Dhammang saranangachami, Sangang saranangachami, Dutiampi buddhang saranangachami, Dutiampi dhammang saranangachami, Duty ampi sangang saranangachami. Tati ampi buddang saranangachami. Tati ampi dammang saranangachami. Tati ampi sangang saranangachami. So welcome to everyone uh, for this Wednesday evening uh, Sutta class. And uh, this evening we are continuing on with the uh, discussion or study of the insight knowledges that I began actually a few weeks ago. And uh, last week, we finished up sort of the, the seven of the eight insight knowledges uh, all up to the stage of equanimity of the formations. Uh, now I'm going to, and I talked a little bit about uh, that, but I'm going to review that last uh, stage, the uh, the knowledge and vision of equanimity uh, or the knowledge and vision of the way equanimity being uh, one of the last uh, stage of these uh, or the second to the last stage uh, of the culmination of the insight. So the equanimity as we say, is a stage, you know, after having contemplated the five aggregates uh, as uh, uh, anicca, dukkha, and anatta, or as impermanent, suffering, and no self, and, uh, you know, developing those insight knowledges into, you know, the rise and fall, and then seeing the, uh, the danger in being uh, having attachments and especially ignorance uh, in discerning what is the path and what is not the path. Uh, finally, we arrive at equanimity. And equanimity is a very purified state of mind that's no longer reacting to any of the six sense stimuluses coming through the senses or the five aggregates. But of course, the six senses are included within the five aggregates. There's are just different, two different types of uh, contemplation and covering all the bases of anything whatsoever that could come through our uh, senses. Contemplating in them as, uh, as impermanent, suffering, or no self. And that equanimity is similar, you know, equanimity is talked about uh, in, the, in the attaining the stages of jhana, the third and the fourth jhana have equanimity as one of their primary mental qualities. And then this equanimity of formations, uh, this is equanimity in the 
mundane and super mundane jhanas. Now, this is a little bit technical, and it may be a little bit confusing to well, some persons, but most people are familiar with the four uh, jhanas, that means states of uh, one-pointed concentration. And those are normally called the mundane jhanas because people can uh, practice these jhanas without necessarily developing insight and uh, attaining enlightenment. But for one wishing to you know, destroy the defilements in the mind, uh, then one has to develop the seven factors of enlightenment, follow the, the four foundations of mindfulness and develop the, the seven factors of enlightenment. And uh, the seventh factor of enlightenment is actually this equanimity. And one attains the jhanas even through the development of the seven factors of enlightenment, but it's through practicing awareness, not one-pointed concentration. So uh, when you attain the jhanas by contemplating impermanence and contemplating the six senses and the five aggregates, then that's called the supramundane jhana, uh, or that equanimity uh, of the of that factor of enlightenment, uh, and one can attain enlightenment through that uh, using that supramundane uh, jhana, uh, as opposed to the uh, normal definition of the jhana, the one-pointed jhana that is de developed through concentration. So by developing the four foundations of mindfulness, the seven factors of enlightenment, one attains the supramundane uh, jhana. Uh, that means the, the, the jhana, but with the mind, you know, in the in the wide open state of awareness and grounded in the present moment awareness, seeing the three characteristics. Anyway, so uh, this equanimity, equanimity of formations is uh, considered the first stage of what is called emergence. Now, in the notice that I sent out. Uh, last week about today's topic. It was on this the, the process of emergence. And that's the mind emerging from the conditioned state and the process leading towards the actual attainment of stream entry and or the paths and the fruits. Now so equanimity is, there's three stages of this, what is called the process of emergence. Uh, and kind of, a, there's a little analogy like this. Let's say a caterpillar is uh, spinning the, is cocoon. And the, the caterpillar spins that cocoon and the, that, is like the meditator practicing insight meditation and going through these uh, stages of, uh, you know, the seven uh, stages of knowledge and vision of the way. And uh, also the, you know, attainment, uh, the development of the seven factors of enlightenment. Uh, you're sort of spinning a cocoon around the uh, the mind, and uh, it then it's in these last stages. It's like the caterpillar breaking out 
now it's not a caterpillar anymore, but within the cocoon, it's changing into a butterfly. So this state of emergence is like that. Once the 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 mind has has entered that equanimity, it's like being in the cocoon. That means it's protected from all of the sensory impingements and protected from the the greed, hatred, and delusion uh, that has been there in the mind and is undergoing this transformative process. Again, this is an analogy. And uh, then it starts to emerge from the cocoon as a butterfly. So that is kind of an analogy of how the mind undergoes this transformative process through the development of the insight meditation. And then this process of finally emerging from that, that deep insight, emerging into the, the, the state of, the, of liberation and realizing the, the, the state of liberation. So, I, you know, this is a very difficult thing to try to, you know, describe in, in words. But uh, so these similes are probably, uh, the, these are coming from the Visuddhimagga. Uh, similes are used to sort of describe uh, this process. So these three uh, stages of emergence, starting with the, the equanimity of formations, then that evolves or emerges into what is called conformity knowledge. And from the conformity knowledge, then there is the what is called the change of lineage. Now again, these are technical terms, but uh, as I try to you know, you know explain them, hopefully it might uh, be a little bit uh, clear. But again, this is a very very deep state of, of meditation, and probably most people are have not you know, come to those levels. But uh, You know, it's good to kind of know the process that's involved because if it starts to happen, instead of freaking out and worrying, oh my God, what's going to happen to me? Am I going to go mad? Uh, You just no, okay, this is what's supposed to happen. Be cool, you know, and be able to to stay relaxed and really kind of, you know, let it let it go. You know, let it take over. At, At that point, it's almost on automatic pilot. But anyway, so the state of equanimity. Uh, now, again, there's something called the, the triple gateway to liberation. And this basically means you can a- attain these stages of equanimity uh, through focusing on impermanence, which is called the, the signless uh, liberation, or you can make your main focus on seeing the the suffering inherent in the five aggregates. So either you can contemplate impermanence of the five aggregates or contemplate the suffering inherent in the five aggregates. Or you can contemplate the no self. That means the emptiness of any abiding uh, I, me, or mind that owns or controls the consciousness. That con- this, this sense of I is basically a clever illusion that has been ingrained or arises along with uh, awareness. So uh, either one of those three or all three of those people can take as a, as a basis for developing uh, you know, these insight uh, knowledges. But normally contemplating impermanence first, you naturally uh, see the suffering inherent in the ignorance and the attachment. And then you also then understand or experience the no self nature of it, that it's all going on because of, you know, basically, the, you know, karma energized the uh, habits and so on, the, that mental process. So we've talked about many times before. So, uh, 
So there's a, I think I might have uh, used a couple of these little analogies before uh, to illustrate uh, this process. So this process of uh, emergence or from the equanimity and then the conformity knowledge is like uh, there's a simile. I actually want to put up this shared uh, screen now. Uh, uh, let me let me try to do it, uh, Suma. Uh, okay, so uh, this is the uh, attachment that I sent out to you uh, last week. Now you may or may not have read it. Uh, but these uh, similes uh, are very nice similes that illustrate this uh, process. And uh, the first one we can see there is the fruit bat. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you know what a fruit bat is, but anyway, you can imagine what it is, I guess. So I'm just going to... Uh, read this, you can read it along. So there was this fruit bat and it alighted, it landed on a, a fruit bearing tree, which is a honey tree uh, with five branches. Thinking I, I shall found, find some uh, fruits here. He's right, she's looking for fruits to eat. That's what she lives on, the bat. So she lands on this tree thinking she's going to find some fruits. And so she, uh, these five branches uh, are a simile for the five aggregates, our body, feelings, perceptions, volitional formations, and consciousness. So she, she looks all over the first branch, but she doesn't see any fruits that are worth taking. And then she goes to the other four branches and she, she sees nothing that uh, would satisfy her. They were kind of barren. So she thinks this tree is barren. There's nothing worth taking here. Nothing is gonna give me any satisfaction. So she loses interest in the tree. So that's like the uh, equanimity the stage of equanimity, it loses interest in the, the, the six sense impingements that are coming through or the five aggregates. And it, it just rests kind of in its own little cocoon, protected little cocoon of equanimity in which it's not being uh, uh, affected by not getting attracted towards pleasurable feeling or getting repulsed by uh, any painful uh, feeling. So that's, the, that's sort of the quality of the equanimity. It knows that all these sense objects in, in the conditioned world is barren of anything that's going to bring any lasting ultimate uh, peace or satisfaction and just bringing a lot of uh, you know, problems. So then she climbs up on the straight branch or the trunk of the tree. She climbs up the straight trunk of the tree and pokes her head out through the gap in the leaves to see the sky. And then she alights from that tree. So that's like the conformity knowledge the bat running up, the realizing there's nothing on the tree worth uh, staying for. And it, so it conforms to its understanding. And so it's leaving, it's finding the exit. And so it's conforming to the truth that there's nothing worth clinging and grasping or identifying as I, me, or mine in this whole world. So it conforms and finds the exit, looking for the exit. And it runs up to the top of the tree 
and pokes its head out and sees the clear sky. And then it alights, leaves that tree, it sees the sky as being peaceful, and it leaves that tree and then lands on uh, another tree. We won't say what the other tree is, uh, but anyway, it leaves that tree. And that is what the change of lineage. Once it leaves the tree, it alights. Uh, well, there's be some other similes uh, that might better illustrate that. But anyway, uh, I'm just this simile, especially it's about understanding how the mind conforms to its, the understanding of Anicca, Dukkha, and Anatta. That's the important part. And that it's, it's like the, the bat flies off of that tree. And, you know, and that's like leaving the conditioned world uh, behind. <clears throat> and uh, we'll see some other uh, similes that uh, describe the next uh, uh, process. So, that's uh, one of these uh, similes. Now, you can read uh, the, the comparisons. The meditator is regarded like the fruit bat. Five aggregates are the objects of clinging, like the, uh, the honey tree with five branches. And the meditator interpreting of the five, act clinging to the five aggregates is like the the bat landing on the tree thinking, oh, I'm going to enjoy all these fruits. So the average average person says, oh, I'm going to enjoy sight, sound, smell, taste, touches, and thoughts, and uh, so on, but doesn't know the trap in that, and then gets trapped by that, gets addicted by these things, and then gets uh, sorrow, lamentation, and pain when these objects change. So anyway, that's the knowledge that one uh, understands. So that's the knowledge uh, And then the uh, the knowledge beginning with desire for deliverance and you know the equanimity by seeing the characteristic of impermanence. Uh, suffering or no self. Uh, the conformity knowledge is like the bat climbing up the straight branch. The change of lineage knowledge is like her poking her head out and looking upwards. And the path knowledge is like flying up into the air and uh, landing on a different tree, but it would have to be the Nibbana tree <laughs> if there was such a tree. Okay. So uh, anyway, let's go on. I'm not going to read all these similes, but I like this house also. Uh, each of these gives us kind of a different uh, uh, kind of, you know, take on uh, the same phenomena. So the owner of a house, after eating the meal in the evening, climbed into his bed and fell asleep. Then the house caught on fire. When the person who woke up and saw the fire, he got frightened. Uh, that frightened is like the knowledge of terror and danger. So he wakes up terrified. The house is on fire. I got to get out. So that desire for deliverance. Uh, uh, so he looks around and then he sees uh, the way and he sees the way out, the exit again. So he quickly goes uh, to the exit, exits the burning house, that's the conformity knowledge, and then stays in a safe place, which would be the, the change of lineage. And so you can read those, uh, those, uh, the interpretation of that. So the desire of deliverance is like the man looking out, away out of the burning house, the conformity knowledge is the man seeing the way out, sees the exit sign, and change of lineage is the, mind, uh, the man going out into where it's safe and uh, fresh air and without the fire. Then uh,
and you can read uh, a lot of these uh, later. I'm going to read one more this, about the child, number six. Uh, so there was a woman who was very fond of her son, it seems. Now, one was sitting on the upper floor of a house. <clears throat> I guess the child was down on the down in the street or the yard uh, playing. She heard the sound of a child in the street. And she wondered, is somebody hurting my child? Maybe like today, you know, contemporary. Ch children get kidnapped out of their yards, don't they? So uh, maybe she heard the sound. She thought somebody kidnapping my child or going to hurt my child. Anyway, she ran down and she mistook that child for her own son. She picked up someone else's child because in her haste, she wasn't very mindful. And she just scooped up this child and then ran off over somewhere with it. And then she realized, oh, my gosh, this is not my son. And she put it down. And she was ashamed and looked about her, thinking, oh, no, no one's going to say I'm a baby thief. And she put the child down there and then and quickly returned to the upper floor of the house and sat down. So again, taking the five aggregates as I, me, and mine is like the woman mistaking someone else's child for her own. The recognition that this is not I or me or mine because of the insight meditation, the three characteristics, are recognizing that it's someone else's child. It's not I, me, or mine. And desire for deliverance is like her looking about her, you know, uh, and conformity knowledge is putting the child down there and then in change of lineage when she, uh, uh, you know, put the child down and uh, stood uh, in the street alone. And then the path is like a return to the upper floor. And fruition is like her sitting down after returning. Now, these next little similes are also interesting. Just as a man faint with hunger and famished longs for delicious food, so the meditator is famished with the hunger of the rebirths that he, and being caught and bound in the web of kama and suffering because of the, the addiction and the uh, the web of the kama and result. And he longs for the food consisting of mindfulness occupied with the body, which has the taste, taste of the deathless. Or just as a thirsty man whose throat and mouth are parched, they would wish for a drink with many ingredients to satisfy their thirst. So too, this meditator who is parched uh, with the with the dry thirst of the rounds of rebirths and the sufferings of being caught in negative karmic uh, habits, longs for the drink of the noble eightfold path. And you can read the rest of these uh, as well. Or number twelve, just as a man sick with poison longs for an antidote, so too this meditator sick with the poison of defilements. Green hatred and delusion longs for liberation, longs for the deathless medicine that destroys ignorance. That is why it was said above, when he knows and sees thus, his heart or her heart retracts, retreats, recoils from the three kinds of becoming recoils from the four kinds of generation, the five kinds of destiny, the seven stations of stations of consciousness, and the nine abodes of beings. His heart no longer goes out to them, just as water drops retract when dropped on a hot stove or on a lotus leaf. Uh, uh, they, they quickly fall off. So, this is uh, the result of, you know, having practiced these uh, eight insight uh, knowledges, uh, and especially the, well, these seven, 
because we haven't talked about the eighth one, uh, but we're talking about the, between the seventh and the eighth is this emergence. So from the state of equanimity, the seventh of the uh, eight stages of insight, and then the, the eighth one is the uh, purity of knowledge and vision, uh, which is the four stages of enlightenment. So anyway, uh, so <clears throat> and then you know uh, the rest of this is uh, you know. So it all starts really with the equanimity about formations. Uh, and it helps the, the mind, uh, you know, practice uh, the Dhamma and keep on practicing. But uh, again, it's using the, uh, that, uh, the super mundane jhana uh, especially when one uses that and uses that to uh, attain the uh, the first uh, path uh, in this stream entry. So uh, these 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 states of emergence again are the uh, equanimity of formations, and then the because of that. The mind conforms with uh, the truth. Uh, so it's actually the, it, the metamorphosis of consciousness. Again, a good when you go into a deep meditation or you're doing, you know, the mind is uh, is gone through these insight knowledges, and again, each is a stepping stone to to the next. You just don't arrive at equanimity of formations without. Uh, you know, developing the insight into anicca, dukkha, and uh, anatta. And so the, the mind emerges uh, from uh, that state of the conditioning. Now there's another, uh, actually there's another little uh, analogy that uh, actually shows the uh, this is the moment I'm going to try to find this. So you can read this in uh, this number nine, your conformity knowledge. Um, I'm trying to find this little uh, uh, it's in there, so I can't find it. But I, I I'm just going to uh, explain it. So there's a one of these analogies. Is like a man, you know, is being chased by robbers and he comes to a river and he wants to see the dangers on this bank. But, you know, he wants to become free from the dangers on this shore where these robbers that are chasing him to cut off his head. So he sees the other side of the river as being very peaceful. And he, he wants to get to the other side of the river. So he sees a rope hanging from uh, a tree branch over the river. And so he runs and grabs a hold of the rope. And so that's similar, that's like the conformity knowledge. The mind has realized that that's the way to freedom if I use that rope to swing across the river and land on the other bank, I'll be free from all the dangers of this uh, bank. All the suffering that was on the other uh, the bank. 
of the conditioned mind. And so as he, he, he jumps and grabs the rope and the ropes as it's swinging out across the river, that's the change of lineage is now the mind is changing from this bank of the conditioned mind. And as, the, as his body gets over the other bank, he lets go of that uh, rope and drops to the ground. And that is called the path knowledge. Uh, the first path being the stream entry. So the conformity knowledge is the man running, leaping into the air to grab the rope. The conformity knowledge or the change of lineage is the, the man swinging over to the other side and then letting go of the rope and then landing on the uh, ground is called the path knowledge. But when he lands on the ground, any of you who, you know, done some stuff like that, or, you know, you it's a little bit unstable when you land, or it, it takes a, a few moments to kind of steady your balance, or you might stagger a little bit, you know, and, and so on. But then, it, you know, it takes a few moments to kind of, uh, you know, uh, get your balance and all that. So that is the path knowledge. And then once you realize that you're safe and sound on the other side and you've composed yourself, then you walk freely and enjoying the fruits of the trees on this side and the freedom of danger. Uh, that is called the uh, fruition uh, knowledge of the first path. So uh, again, this is something that's happening internally in the mind. It's not something you're doing with the body necessarily. So it's, it's all an analogy of the mental process going from being stuck on, on the, you know, the six sense objects and hoping there's still some kind of happiness in some of the sense objects or the five aggregates. You know, there's always the, waiting for the sweet one, right? And uh, there's a nice little story of uh, Mula Nasrudin, who is a sort of a Sufi mystic. And uh, he was teaching his students and he, he brought a big bag of chilies and he was eating these bag of red chilies in front of his students. And, uh, you know, this, uh, this Mula Nasrudin, the teacher, his eyes were, were uh, you know, watering and uh, his uh, vision was blurred because of these, uh, these uh, hot chilies that he was eating all these hot chilies. And he was kind of suffering and his students were, saw him that he was, you know, all these tears were coming and, uh, and they said, Mula, Mula, why are you eating all these chilies? And he, you know, behind with the, all the tears and he said, I'm trying to find a sweet one. So, so that's, that is, uh, you know, even though our people are suffering in the world, they're still trying to find something that's permanent or eternal or something that's going to give them uh, some happiness uh, in this conditioned world. And uh, <clears throat> that's why people cannot totally let uh, go. That's why the contemplation of anicca, dukkha, and anatta are the, you know, the, the path of the insight and is the, the wisdom that's developed through uh, you know, practicing the four foundations of mindfulness and is really the, you know, the wisdom. When you talk about the wisdom of the Buddha, it means the wisdom of anicca, dukkha, and uh, especially that of anatta. So, uh, so that kind of, uh, you know, explains <laughs> sort of, you know, the way, the, the actual process, again, it's a process, all the way from, you know, the very first, when you first start meditating, gaining initial some kind of concentration, then you start practicing mindfulness, and 
the four foundations of mindfulness and people could be practicing for months or even some uh, years, even uh, gradually uh, developing the level of uh, concentration and mindfulness, overcoming the hindrances. Of course, that depends on each person and how much they practice. And then at some point when the, the mind is uh, developed a high degree of concentration and and then then uh, tuning into these insight knowledges, cultivating these insight knowledges, uh, uh, the eight insight knowledges that we've been uh, discussing uh, in the last uh, three weeks. Uh, and even that could take a long, long period of time, people cultivating the necessary, uh, uh, you know, uh, degrees of mindfulness, concentration, and wisdom building up to eventually reaching that, that stages of equanimity. And then it's just a matter of maintaining that long enough. And then the mind undergoing this, uh, this process of transformation or emergence to experience the total dissolution of the I consciousness, or at least the, the gradual dissolution of the I consciousness the mind is emerging out of its ego-bound uh, uh, trap into a more open and spacious uh, awareness in which the ego is, is uh, uh, you know, progressively uh, weaker and weaker and weaker uh, until finally it conforms to the truth and uh, then undergoes that last final process before you know, reaching the first stage of enlightenment. Anyway, I know this might have sounded very intellectual and so on, and, but again, you, you know, uh, at the best, this can only hint at the process involved and only with your, you know, your own practice of meditation, but some of these uh, kind of uh, similes and analogies can kind of help when you start to experience some of these deeper levels of insight, uh, these things will become clear. Okay, so uh, I'm going to stop sharing this. And uh, the uh, next week, I might go over the these last four stages, uh, the 10 fetters and the four stages of, of enlightenment, just to kind of finish uh, this uh, process of, you know, the, the the culmination of uh, insight, and how insight meditation, you know, leads to the attainment of the four stages of, uh, you know, enlightenment. So now, if anybody has any questions that uh, might have come up based on any of that, uh, I don't see anything in the in the chat room. So. Uh, we might uh, take a little uh, break to uh, prepare for the yoga, uh, to use the restroom, take a few minutes. And uh, if you can think of any questions you might have uh, uh, about any of these things we've been discussing, you can uh, write them down as a chat question or you know, could uh, you could unmute yourself and ask a question? But first of all, let's uh, take a few minutes. You could uh, think about it if something comes up, uh, and then after that, we'll uh, carry on with uh, our uh, yoga stretches and then the meditation after that. So let's go ahead and take a few minutes of break and uh, see if you have any questions that come up you want to ask about any of those stages of. Uh, insight. Okay, so we'll come back in a few minutes.
Okay, friends, uh, doesn't look like uh, anybody has written anything in the chat uh, box. So we'll give you, uh, give you one last chance to ask any question if you want to unmute uh, your mic and just ask a, a question. Uh, and you can do that. Hi, Bonte, this is Dennis. Oh, hi, Dennis. Is the uh, immaterial jhana and the supra mundane jhanas, are they the same, just different names? Uh, or are no. they different? Okay. They're different. Because uh, the immaterial jhana is sort of like a hypnotic state. It's, uh, it's like, you know, you're not aware of anything around you. That's why it's called immaterial state formless jhana basically the other senses are cut off and you're just uh, kind of locked into this uh, very vast whatever you are using the infinite space nothingness infinite consciousness uh, but there's not any contact with the uh, the material uh, world and if a person happened to die in one of those uh, immaterial jhanas it is said that you know it's a mind state without a body, and uh, you know the, the period of time you could be in one of those states is you know hundred thousand years <laughs> or more, but still one have to come back again and be born again. So uh, those immaterial states definitely are not like uh, the super mundane jhana, and uh, these so or even the conformity knowledge. And the, the 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 you know the experience of uh, cessation is a different it's a different kettle of fish. Uh, couldn't there, you know there might be some kind of similarities, but you know that's why the Buddha said that is not necessarily the path. Now there is a method if one is able to attain those immaterial states and reach something beyond it, which is called niroda samapatti then that is said to be uh, similar to uh, the, the state of Nibbana, which destroys the defilements, but not just those four immaterial jhanas uh, themselves. And, uh, you know, I think it's, you know, to, uh, to develop concentration to that level, uh, uh, you know, is is not easy. I think it's uh, you know the path of uh, insight meditation is going to be a lot easier and more practical for most people because you remain conscious and aware of things going on around you as you're developing these stages of of equanimity and so on. So, okay. Thank you. Does that answer your question. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, it does. Thanks, Monte. Okay, friends, uh, there's no other questions. Uh, going once, going twice. Speaker forever, hold your peace. Okay, so let's go ahead and get ready for our uh, uh, yoga and, and meditation, okay? okay? I gotta take a minute or two to adjust the things here because uh, yeah, my in-person technical support is not around, so I have to arrange the room for the yoga. Okay, it's just a, a minute or so.
Okay, friends, just uh, stand straight, relax your arms and hands, the sides, relax the shoulders, and gently close your eyes, and feel your feet pressing the floor. You start to feel the height and weight of the body over the feet. Let your awareness rest. Feel the eyes, that point behind the eyes. Feel the, the outline of the body. And then begin some deep, slow breathing. Take in these three seconds to slowly expand your abdomen, your cage, and up your chest, holding the air in the lungs. Two or three seconds, and slowly breathe out. And through the last bit of air, go out of the lungs. Take a few more breaths like that, cultivating this mindfulness. And breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, standing here and now. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, standing here and now. Breathing in, feeling the whole body. Breathing out, feeling the whole body. Now we'll begin the movements, coordinating the movements with the breathing. On the next in breath, raise the arms over the head, interlock the fingers, turn the palms up, straighten the arms, stretch your head back, bend back a little bit, stretch upward. On the out breath, turn the palms down and touch the top of the head. Again, in breath, palms up, straighten the arms. Out breath, touch the top of the head. Third time. Hold that upward stretch longer, bend back a little more. Feel the sensation. And release the fingers on the out breath, lower the hands back to the sides. Relax. Just keep feeling the body. Close the eyes and feel that outline of the standing body. Just remember standing, standing, present moment awareness. Just letting go of your thought. Let the thoughts come and go in the back of the awareness. Keep the sensation body in front of the awareness.
On the next in breath, push up on the toes, raising the arms over the head in this way, facing the hands toward each other and stretch up. The out breath, come back down, arms to the side, heels to the floor. Use the in breath to help lift up the body. Relax. Just keep feeling the body. You feel the increased. Subtle sensation, pulsation, where the clothing touching touches the skin in different places. More physical sensation you can notice in this time in your mind and wandering thoughts. And next we'll do knee bending. Again on the end breath, lift up on the toes and raise the arms up front for balance. On the out breath, bend the knees and lower down to the squatting position if you can, balancing on the balls of the shoe. And a deep breath to lift back up. Feel the muscles of the legs pushing the body in. On the toes. Mm -hmm. Now, let's move the arms. increased heartbeat. But the pulsation mm -hmm. sensation. Mm -hmm. Feel some prickling, reaching sensation. Aches or pain. Let them come and go in the background. Within this large standing body. Next, we'll do side bending. On an in breath, use both arms up over the head. And keep the fingers and the arms straight close to your head. On the out breath, bend over the right side as far as comfortable you can. And keep the hands and arms parallel to each other in a regular track. In breath, lift up. On the other side, out breath. Feel the stretch inside. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. From the outbreath over the arms. Relax. Just keep feeling the body. Keep the movie camera of awareness on. Most like it's videotaping your body standing there, doing movements. It's called detached awareness. Standing. Standing. We now spread the feet about three feet apart. And you're twisting from side to side, holding the arms out parallel to the floor. You breathe in. On the out breath, twist to the right. Keep your eyes focused on the hand going back. Then back, come back to the front, not to lose the balance. Let the feet turn with the body and then go to the other side. No. Mm-hmm. Then back, back to the front. And to the right. Let's move to each side. Lower the arms, relax. You know, all the different sensations each exercise generates. Different sensations in different places, depending on what muscles are stretched. And what is it that you're actually feeling? Is it basically a vibration of several molecules, atoms, electrons? You break the body down to small elements, just the atoms and electrons, just this energy. This body is just a mass of condensed energy, compressed energy. You feel the body, that's basically what you're feeling. The eye inside.
now bring the feet together again. We do one last exercise, the backward and forward bending to hold your arms, your hands out, turn your hands outward. Be careful with the back bend, don't bend back too far the first time. From an in breath, raise the arms up and gradually spread them out to the sides. Arms go out to the horizontal position, sides, and then backward. Look up at the ceiling. And carefully lift up on an in breath. On an out breath, lower the arms and hands down towards the floor. You can touch the floor by your feet, keeping them really straight. Begin standing up, turn the palms outward again, in breath, lifting the arms up and out to the sides as you bend back. Lift up on an in breath, keeping the arms out at the sides, out breath, lower to the floor. The little bones in the lower spine stretch out. Keep the legs straight, no stretch in the leg muscles. Then standing up again, turn the palms out, and once more the back bend. In breath, lift up, out breath. When you finish and you straighten up, bring your hands together at the chest and back to the side. Relax. Just keep the attention focused behind the eye and you have an outline of the standing body. Relax. Organic aliveness of the activated life force in the oxygenated blood, electrical energy, life force energy, awareness. The first stage of meditation is learning how to stay grounded, centered in the body, feeling all the sensations and things there. You develop that insight into arising and vanishing, the first insight, knowledge, rising and falling. Okay, so I'll mindfully come back to you sitting place for the sitting awareness.
Dear friends, let's try to sit straight. Try to align your back and the spine and the back of the head in a straight line. First of all, just feel the weight of the body pressing the seat. And feel the solid contact of the buttocks pressing the seat. And just mentally feel the way the knees are bent and feet touching underneath, where the feet touch the floor, where they're crossed. If you feel any little sensation, kind of just imagine the switch on the movie camera of awareness, you kind of just pan the movie camera of awareness up through the body. Let the awareness come up to feel your hands and fingers where they touch your legs or where they touch together. And feel the outline of your thumbs and fingers. I feel the subtle sensations, pulsation, the hands and fingers. And feel the weight of the arms hanging from the shoulder. Relax the shoulder. Feel where the clothing touches the skin of the shoulder or upper arm, where the chest. Kind of feel around the base of the neck. The collar of your shirt touches the base of the neck. Try to feel inside the throat and dryness inside the throat or moistness, or any raspy, itching sensation, soreness. Now moving up to feel the face. And feel the lips touching together. The sensation of the dryness or moistness in the lips. Feel where the upper lip touches the lower lip.
and feel the tongue laying in the mouth. The tongue may touch the teeth. You now let the awareness rest behind your eyes. Just feel the eyes and the sockets and the eyelids stretched over the eyeballs. Just relax the eyes. might see some light or color, perhaps a mental image, maybe just black darkness. Just feel the subtle eye movements, the eyelids stretched over the eyeball. And see if you can feel your ears, the outer ear. I feel some kind of magnetized sensation around the ear. And you don't itch you. Feel inside the ear canal. Now feel the hair coming out of the scalp. You have a subtle itching sensation. And again, let the awareness kind of just settle behind the eyes. From that point behind the eyes, let the awareness kind of just expand outward, downward. Try to feel the outline of the sitting body. In a general sense, feeling the head on top, the shoulders, arms, hands torso, buttocks pressing the seat, legs and feet. Kind of just try to imagine or feel that you had a, a handheld video camera controlling it with your attention. Some panning that movie camera through the body, feeling all the different sensations. And again, begin some deep, slow breathing, like we are doing in the yoga meditation. About three seconds to expand the abdomen, rib cage, and upper chest. Feel that expansion in the upper chest, holding the air in for two or three seconds, maybe four seconds. 
Allow the oxygen to get into the bloodstream and slowly breathe out. Try to feel the last bit of air go out of the lungs. Just take several more deep, slow breaths, cultivating this basic mindfulness. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, sitting here and now. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, sitting here and now. Breathing in, feeling the whole body. Breathing out, feeling the whole body. We're going to count the breaths from one to ten. Again, to try to develop a more continuous concentration in the body. On the breathing. With the next expanding in breath, mentally count to one. Feel all the sensation. Hold the breath in two seconds. And with the contracting out breath, also count to one. Feel the last bit of air go out of the lungs. Next in breath, two. Out breath to in breath three out breath three. In four, out four, in five. Out five. In six. Out six. In seven, out seven, in eight. Out eight in nine out nine.
in 10 out 10 I will discontinue the counting let the breathing return to its short or uncontrolled irregular rhythm continue to feel it just keep the attention focused in the middle of the body to feel the residual subtler expanding and contracting sensations the feel where the clothing rubs against the skin of the belly the rib cage your chest it expands and contracts, producing sensations. And just know when the breath is coming in, knowing when the breath is going out. It's cultivating the first insight knowledge of rise and fall, noticing the rising of the breath the in-breath and the falling of the breath with the out-breath are just arising and vanishing. The in-breath arises and stops. So brief pause, the out-breath begins and ends. And that beginning and ending is also the knowledge of rise and fall, everything that has a beginning has an end. And the in-breath begins, last one or two seconds, stops. The out-breath begins, last one or two seconds, stops. Just tune into that first insight knowledge of the rise and fall. Beginning and ending. While you're feeling the breath, other sensations can be noticed also as the rising and vanishing. The rising will last a second or two, stopping. Or even the sounds of the voice, they start and stop. Allow the awareness to kind of just rest behind the eyes, and from that point behind the eyes, you should be able to feel the breathing as well as the outline of the body, observing the body in the body, the breathing body in this larger body, comprised of all these different sensations, just arising and vanishing coming and going very quickly. It's contemplating impermanence. First aggregated material vibrations, all these body sensations, sound sensations. Maybe even thoughts or ideas moving through the mind. They also begin, last a moment, stop, vanish. Something else comes up.
even if something appears to be lasting, you can notice the changes within that apparent lasting sensation. It's always changing in subtle ways. Like the sounds of this voice. Sensations all over the body. Just turn up the power of the mental microscope to notice more and more sensations, sounds, thoughts, urging. Six sense impingements or the five aggregates. It's the rising and vanishing. Arising and vanishing. Moment by moment. Is there anybody that can really control any of those sensations or sounds? This body-mind process is just a continuous process, incessant change and impermanence. Sensory impingements arising and vanishing. A very high rapid speed. If you don't cling to any of the sensations or sounds or thoughts, and they just vanish quickly, something else comes. If you try to cling to any of those sensations or thoughts, try to push them away or Get them to stay. You wind up getting frustrated. You can't control them. Body aches or pains, negative thoughts, distracting sound. They're all clamoring for attention. It's cultivating that detached, onlooking awareness. Not clinging to any pleasurable feeling enduring any unpleasant sensations or feelings. They just arise, last a few moments, maybe longer, but they all change and vanish. 
without having to do anything about it. Just developing that equanimity, present moment awareness. And seeing the danger and being trapped in ignorance, being trapped in the illusion of the ego, trapped in his desires and aversions. And just repeating the same old mistakes over and over and over again, having to suffer the consequences. Cultivating that appearance as samsara as being a terror, source of great suffering if you identify and cling to it tightly. And the danger of being trapped in the web of karma. It's cultivating that sort of wish to be free from this entrapment of ignorance and conditioning, being pulled and bullied around by the ignorant mind with its delusions. If you can, just try to feel this body-mind process as being like an empty house with nobody home to answer the call, knocking on the doors and windows. That's the conformity knowledge. The mind conforming to that there is no indwelling owner or control or I in this body mind process. Only the illusion of one. Just resting in that present moment of awareness, centered in the body. Awareness is like a seeing eye camera in the house. It knows and feels what is happening, but it cannot do anything. It does not judge anything. Just a passive observing with 
anything that comes and goes, pleasant things, painful things, beautiful things, ugly things. Awareness resting in the middle between all the opposite. In the present moment, letting go of the past, the future. Breathing in, sitting, breathing out, sitting, sensations come and go, pleasure and pain come and go, sounds come and go, urges, thoughts, emotions come and go. That's just the constant flow and flux of impermanence, of the six sense stimulation, the five aggregates, just the rising and vanishing one after another. Under the power of the past accumulated habits, ignorance, karma. Without any owner or controller. That's the vision of the insight meditator, the knowledge of insight. the happiness of insight. You experience that liberated present moment aware equanimity. The sense of the eye starts to fade away, that's the conformity knowledge. Sense of I or me fading back into the background. Barely noticeable.
Will the mind be satisfied and peaceful with that? Will it have some fear? Unfinished business that needs to attend to. The sound vibration arises, last a few moments, stop. Like everything else. Sambhi Sankara Anichati Yada Panyaya Pasati Atane Bindati Dukhi Esamagu all conditioned things, six sense objects, the five aggregates are impermanent. They arise only to quickly vanish away. When one sees this with the eye of wisdom, one becomes disenchanted with suffering. This is the path to purity, to freedom. And thus spoke the Buddha.
Now I invite you to join in chanting the word sadhu three times slowly. We do the chanting one long out breath, drawing out those sounds to feel the sound vibrations vibrating in the body and mind. Take a deep, slow breath. Sadhu. Sadhu. Now mindfully place your hands at the edge of the knees. Take one more deep breath as you breathe in. Stretch the head back and pull the hands against the knees to arch the lower spine. Feel the sensation. On an in-breath, lift the head up. And on an out breath, press the chin to the top of the chest to stretch the neck vertebrae. Lift the chin up level on an in breath. And relax on the out breath. Put a smile on your face. Okay, friends, uh, so thank you for tuning in this evening and uh, hope you're able to get uh, you know, some few moments of insights. That why they, that's why they call it insight meditation. The insight knowledges, because as you meditate and just learn how to observe things going through your body and mind, you're, you gain the natural wisdom that uh, pertains to the, our mind and consciousness in the world. The wisdom of this cause of suffering and the ending of suffering. Okay, friends, try to, uh, if you're so inclined, uh, continue working with this cultivating these uh, insight knowledges. Of course, again, first you have to develop some degree of concentration, like, again, I use as a kind of a yardstick, you know, the ability to count your breaths, if you can count your breaths from one to 10 and back to one, or, you know, count your breaths several times from one to 10 without getting lost, you, you actually should be in a state of momentary concentration by that time. Uh, if not, you continue longer until uh, you, know, you can feel that settling and that calmness that comes when the mind is not uh, so neurotically scattered about. And uh, and that's the stage where you can start tuning in to the flow of impermanence. All right? So uh, next week, uh, I'll try to finish up this whole talk, uh, uh, this uh, study of this process of 
inside the process of purification and talk about the 10 fetters and the four stages of uh, liberation. So tonight we talked, just touched on that first state of entering the stream. We'll talk about the, the fetters that we overcome uh, in that practice of gradually attaining uh, all four stages of uh, liberation and eliminating the 10 fetters. Okay, so again, remember, mindfulness a day keeps dukkha away. Try to re read, read again, or if you haven't, uh, to read that attachment I sent out. If you didn't get it, email me uh, to info lionwisdom.org request uh, that attachment with the insight knowledges, which also have this, uh, these four stages of liberation at the very end. Uh, okay. So, and if you're interested to join that, uh, the Thanksgiving retreat, the theme of that Thanksgiving retreat is going to be awareness of living and dying. And the premise is that if you don't know how to live, then you don't, won't know how to die uh, peacefully. If you don't know how to live peacefully, you won't be able to die peacefully. Okay. So if, uh, again, if you're interested to uh, join that Zoom portion of the retreat, and then email me and uh, I'll put you on the list and, and send you out the links and uh, other, some other information. All right, so all the best. Mindfulness today keeps Dukkha away. Namo Buddha. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Sadhu, 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 Bhante. Thank you. And blessings of no pain to you. Have a good night. Thank you. Actually, I just saw now that there were some chats here in the chat box. Uh, basically, it's just a lot of sadhus and so on. So uh, anyway, thank you all. And again, uh, we'll see you. Keep practicing. Thank you, Bhante. Have a good night, Bhante. Good to see you. You too. I hear you even better. Thank you.